Hi, I'm Liz Cully, and welcome back to Cool, Cool, Cool. Each week, I give you a glimpse into what I think is cool and chat with a ton of people that are definitely cool. No topic is off bounds unless, I guess, it's not cool. Welcome to Cool, Cool, Cool. This intro isn't going to be too long because it doesn't need to be. I am talking to one of the funniest people on the planet, Rachel Scallon. I love her so much. If you are not following her, you need to immediately. If you are not aware of her incredibly hilarious podcast, Two Dykes and a Mic, that she does with her co-host Mackenzie, like, subscribe, do all of the things. I needed somebody to talk about ultimatum queer love with. and. I knew Rachel would be that person. Um, We break down the show. So there's lots of spoiler alerts. But honestly, I don't really think you even have to have watched the show to think this episode is funny because, well, let's just call it for what it is. We're both pretty funny. Tons of tour dates this summer for Two Dykes and a Mic. Definitely check it out. Um, Also, if you've watched Ultimatum Queer Love, please DM me and tell me who your favorite and who your least favorite cast member is, because I just can't get enough of this show. Like I said to you before we started recording, last time I saw you, we were just sharing cappuccinos yeah. with nut milk yep. on the street of Studio City. Yeah, so we were. civilized. Mm-hmm. In the valley, just where, where I belong, you know? It is where I'm in the valley now, too. Are you serious? I'm in Glendale. Oh, I love it. Dude, come to us. Come see us. I have to. I literally bring have that to. Girlfriend who you know I'm in love with. And I know. And bring her here. Same. All I do is right now late, lately has just been trail running all over Glendale, all, all over Topanga. I just <gasps> am like running up mountains and it's gorgeous there. We have so many good hiking trails here. However, be careful because there's coyotes and I got surrounded by three. The <gasps> listeners know it was oh, very they scary. outnumbered you? And little ravioli, <laughs> my puppy. No. It was terrible. I haven't gone hiking since. I'm not even exaggerating. Wait, do your listeners know about how fucking good your show was that you produced, your live comedy show? Oh my God, no, they don't. And you know what's so fucked up is I have been trying to put that back together again. You and have I even to. said it to Soho, I'm like, dude, can I please do one for Pride? And some f- cis white no. gay dude has taken fucking over. And I'm so pissed. Would you guys do it again? Duh. A hundred percent. Liz, uh, we first of all, anyone would do anything for you. Hear that. <laughs> no. Obviously. No. Secondly, I would do anything to get back in the Soho house. Okay, well, let, we we got this. We got it. Go. Actually, you know what's interesting? And I shouldn't, and maybe we will or we won't keep this in. We'll see. I have been talking to them about doing like a podcasting, like, oh, not like meet and greet because that sounds cheese, but- like a mixer. Like a mixer. Because you know what, though? Like, you've become friends with my friend Allie Colbert, the best. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Allie is the homie. Allie is great. Um, There's so many people in podcast. Podcasting is a funny thing. Like, I, I, I like how if you're cool by nature, you're, like, down to hop on people's pods and pod swaps and, like, yeah. I think that's such a lovely thing, but I think it could be better and I think it could be more. And you know me, I love introducing people. (laughs) You're so good at it. I love making friends. I'm like, be friends, have a good time, call me, invite me. But yes, we will, this is, I'll write so again and be like, dude, stop being homophobic. Let me do another one of my shows. Your show was so queer. Everyone in the crowd was like- Straight and didn't know it was queer. That was with the best part. You were so funny that night. Everybody was so yeah. It was yeah. A great I show. Remember, I handed out weed gummies. Yeah, yes. dude. You know, I still have them. my mom got so into those particular gummies. She oh. won't have any other ones. We can make. We can send mom a package. Great. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's yeah. a new you. Two dykes and a mic, which mm-hmm. used to be something like I want to fuck my best friend or something. Was it? it exactly? It was exactly that. We went through a, a name change phase that we were trying on called More Than Friends with Ray and Ken. That's because I don't know if you've ever tried to post anything with the word dyke in it, but you get shadow banned pretty quickly. Rachel, my previous show was called Scissoring Isn't a Thing. <laughs> Do you understand 
I literally to this day as an advertising professional of 15 years was like, what the fuck were we thinking? Literally. What were we thinking? Like I had to literally talk Fortune Feimster off the ledge before she came onto the show. She's like, Liz, I'm married now. And of course, I love Jax, her wife, I, right. who I've asked to come on the podcast and she said no. So fine, Jax, whatever. <laughs> I adore Jax. I've known Fortune since so fucking long. Like, so we go back to baby gays in LA. Ew. I would never ask her about sex on a show, but everybody also thought it was like a sex podcast. Right. I Which mean, your podcast is a sex podcast. You could say that. Yeah. I mean, your I'm website talking... says sex positivity. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to talk more about sex and queer sex because I'm very sex forward. What's the difference between being sex forward and sex positive? I think my, sex forward will let you know that sometimes sex isn't always positive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll let you know. Like, sometimes, you, sometimes you injure yourself. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're, mm. you need to like stop and get Gatorade and then mm. jump right back in. You know what I mean? We, I feel like we're more good, bad, and the ugly. Wow. Just a Gatorade break? Just for some electrolytes? Just to yeah. keep going so the I blood mean, sugar doesn't drop? Exactly. 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 I'm an endurance athlete. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. Well, I'm you also, really you are. I did. Literally, I am an endurance athlete, but also I feel like lesbian sex is has gotten too long. And I'll be the only one to say that. Um, I, I, I here, here, I here. <laughs> shit to do. You know what I mean? Like, I can't just keep. We I mean, lucky for me, I it doesn't take me long to have a good time. And then I'm like, good night, snooze. And I just pass out. Blessed. You know, Blessed. that's called topping from the bottom. Mm. Um, <laughs> but so much has happened really. I guess it's a, it's been over a year since I've seen you, which has makes it? me sad. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you go on world tours yes. and you become best friends with Kehlani and you become oh. a TikTok star. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you guys who don't know, Rachel's podcast partner, Mackenzie, who's hysterical and lovely and amazing. And I would assume by now you've already looked up to Dykes and a Mike and you've liked and you subscribed and you wrote a comment and you gave five stars. But these two chuckleheads went on their <laughs> show and they talked about Kane Lonnie's nipples. And it was very funny. It was in reference to the L word Generation Q, quite frankly, the only watchable moment of that third yeah. season was Kaylani's nipples. Um, having sex with Shane, which like <laughs> well played, <laughs> Kaylani. Yeah. But you guys talked about how gay her nipples were, and she fucking reacted to the video and reposted it. Walk me through when Here's you found thing. out what happened. Did <laughs> she also one? I think she follows you now. Holy shit, does she? I don't I know. Check. And then did you guys DM? So okay. give me the full lay. Basically, like, I, I when reviewing, we, like, review on 2 Dex and I'm, like, queer content as well. So we're, like, talking about the L word Gen Q, which, if you've watched it, is, like, eh, you know what I mean? The only thing that stood out were the two stars of the show being Kaylani, Kaylani's left and right nipples. So Correct. we were going on and on about how we love them nips, right? And then we ended up posting just a small clip of it on TikTok. I wake up the next morning, as you do, you know, and then I realize that she had not only like seen it, but she duetted the whole video. So you get to see a side by side of Kaylani with her nipples, listening to us talking about her nipples. It was a very beautiful moment at Two Dykes Incorporated. We had we had a real heyday with that. But we didn't DM or anything. There was nothing beyond that. Why? There was just a beautiful duet. No, but now you I had to have DM. Come on. No DM. You know who we were DMing with though is um G Flip, which was really cool. Cause G Flip also duetted something. We did some other video where we're talking about how Taylor Swift should go full like TikTok lesbian. Mm -hmm. And G Flip. So G Flip will DM two dykes, which is really fun because we're like, and then apparently Idina Menzel now knows who we are. And I'm like, the internet <laughs> wait, is oh, a wait, 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 wild wait. place. Everyone pause. That is potentially, you know, you think about like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. We need to have just a brief pause. Yeah. I think about like, we all say, oh, my God, that's so gay. Or like this gay person is like, well, who's the gayest person that could follow you? A straight woman by the name of Adina Menzel, who, if, for those of you who are living under a rock, you know, was in a little show called Rent and uh, the original Alphaba in Wicked. Yeah. That 
ma'am, is the <laughs> gayest fucking follow that has ever existed. Yes. It truly, I, when I am, when I was closeted and listening to Take Me or Leave Me on loop on an MP3 player pre iPod and just like looking at Idina Menzel's jawline, thinking to myself, like, and hearing her harmonize with another woman just over and over and over again while I'm closeted, like, is the reason that I was like solidified in my lesbianism. So to have her, her like masseuse was DMing us and was like, she masseuse? loves the video. What are you talking about? Listen, uh, the world is a wild place when you're a queer person on the internet. It is wild out there. I had no idea. I'm just a stand up comedian. You know what I mean? I'm used to just like doing jokes for people and then moving on with your life. And then you start putting stuff on the internet. And the next thing you know, Idina Menzel's masseuse is talking to you. About how Idina loves the video. See, here's the good thing and the bad thing with the names, right? Two dykes and a mic. You guys are dykes. It's clear. Yeah. Now that I've changed the name, nobody knows I'm gay. I'm right back to square one. Yes. Where I got to come out. I got to beg the gays to like me. I got to beg the gays to follow me. I have to be like, I eat pussy. Just so yes. everybody knows. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. such a, it feels very unfair. But God, I love this trajectory for you. I mean, you wake up in the morning. Kehlani has not only seen it, ingested it, but the duet is just, she was t clearly tickled. I mean, it. she must have been titillated. Titillated and tickled. You get a gazillion followers on TikTok. Now you are deeply, deeply inserted into lesbian TikTok. In fact, you are now a pillar of lesbian TikTok. Can yeah. you repost something of mine so that, or follow me so that I become in lesbian TikTok? Yeah, I've never even, no one's even said, I've never heard that we're such pillars of lesbian TikTok honored. It's hard to get think engaged. So? I think you, you are. It's G hard to get flip, engaged. G Flip, who is like, <laughs> I have, I can't. There, well, then I'm thinking, what if Chriselle is watching? Then oh we're halfway God. to selling Sunset. I'm basically well, in the Oppenheim group at this point. Yeah, you are. You're, you're driving around in a literal wrapped G-Wagon yeah. in the valley. That's me in the in my fully carpeted apartment. <laughs> this is how we're doing it now. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's weird. You, it's hard to get a gauge because like I'm from the Instagram generation. Mm -hmm. So when you post on TikTok, I feel like I still feel like I'm just a scientist. We're trying to just figure out who's on here. You know what I mean? I'm like, who's on? But it feels like it's its own space. It doesn't it's feel like the rest of. The, the internet world or the internet. Yeah, it does feel very particular and it does feel really, really queer, like lesbian forward. Like I feel like every person on TikTok is just trying to reach lesbian TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Myself included. <laughs> like, I literally have to tag queer TikTok, lesbians of TikTok, lesbian, gay, like just to be like, I promise I'm one I of you. I swear to God, I'm one of you. And it just doesn't, it barely works. Now, that's actually funny. So I went to the Netflix Pride Party. You're so month. cool, Liz. You're literally no. my coolest friend. Everything you say, I'm like, Stop. Thinking, how are you so cool? I'm not cool. No Adopt one knows who I am. me, please. No, just listen. Oh, my God. So anyway, I'm at the, I'm at the Netflix Pride Party. Mm -hmm. My wife comes with me, which you've met my wife. She's pretty shy. She never really goes out to shit. So I was like excited that she was with me. We walked your in wife. to Hearts WeHo. And I was like, oh my God, dude, I have not been in a fucking WeHo club since before the pandemic. My God. I'm not really a clubber. And if I'm clubbing, I want to be like in a basement in Berlin on like <laughs> ketamine or yeah. I want to be on like a yacht in Ibiza on yeah. ecstasy or I want to be in like Club Pilates in downtown Glendale <laughs> where I go with 50, average 50-year-old 50 Armenian women and we do yes. Pilates five days a week. So those are the clubs that I go to. So anyway, we walk in and there was all these like, it was, it was a, it was, you know, there was the whole Queer Eye for the Straight Guy cast there, which was great. I've, you know, known Karamo for a while. It was like, oh my God, so good to see. Like I was kind of bopping around. I was like, ooh, ooh. And there are lots of gay, young gay boys, lots of like PR people. Um, we go upstairs and there's like this huge group of younger-ish, but also our age-ish lesbians that were like very um, 
earn like eager and excited to be there, but I couldn't I didn't know who any of them were. So I assumed that they were TikTok stars. I like looked at my wife. I'm like, I have no idea who the fuck these people are. Like, I'm assuming they're TikTok stars, you know? Mm -hmm. And one of them in the group, this stunning, stunning person, gorgeous in a white mesh. Actually, something I feel like you would wear. I'm hearing white mesh. Like a mesh sweater vibe. Yes. Like a white mesh sweater and pants. This beautiful, beautiful black lesbian walks up to us. And I was like, oh, my God. And I, a friend of mine from Netflix kind of grabbed me. So I turned around to talk to her. And I turned back and I was like, is this bitch hitting on my wife? Like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Which was kind of weird because they're both like, I don't want to say butch, but like more like androgynous, whatever. And I was like, yeah. okay, Rachel, get it. <laughs> and then I, of course, insert myself into the conversation. I'm like, hi. And this lovely, lovely lesbian says to me, hi, I'm Mal. And I'm like, oh, my God, Mouse, so nice to talk to you. Like, what's up with you? And as uh, she's like, oh, my God. And very, like, happy and really, like, so, like, what do you do for work? And I was like, oh, God, like, whatever. <laughs> I was, you know, I was like, oh, God. Yep, she's a TikToker. But as I'm speaking, Alaska, Alaska Thunder Thuck, fuck, I don't know why I just, like, I had a brain aneurysm there, but <laughs> – announces this actress who looked pretty familiar to me, but I couldn't remember who she was. Like Joanna Schwisser, Fisher, Martinez, Esquivez, something like five names, but it looked like a girl from the early 2000s. And they're like, now is the world premiere of ultimatum queer love. And the fucking chick we're talking to, Mal, and the whole kind of thing that I think our TikTokers lose their mind. It's the cast. Of ultimate. <gasps> now, I have had no one to talk to about this. I attempted to make a TikTok of my initial reactions to the show. Yeah. Not sure if you saw it, but go ahead and look at it. I tried. I'm trying. As again, you're an observer of TikTok. I, or a scientist, I feel like I am a Martian alien trying to insert myself, whatever. Have you finished the whole series? Oh, I've watched the whole fucking thing. Okay, and good. I've Thank been God. DMing with Mal the entire time. So, oh, you've been DMing personally with Mal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Mal Rachel, is everything. When I tell you, I didn't know. So imagine not knowing who these people are <laughs> watching the thing. And I was like, oh, my God. Mal's like, yeah, that's me. So I, of course, at, and I can now talk about it. So spoiler alert. If you haven't watched it, don't listen. Right. You've watched it all, right? Of course. Okay, thank God. <sighs> of course. Bite my brow. Yeah. I was it's like, job. everybody wanted to fuck you, huh? And she was like, no. I'm like, everyone, Me, everyone, a hundred percent wanted to fuck you. She's like, no. And then we were like, so did you end up with the person? Because of course, like this is a month plus ago. So the show has not come out. We don't oh. nothing. I was like, tell me everything right now. I'm like in the corner with her. She's like, no, I'm single. We were like, oh, okay. Kind of ruined it, but all right. And mm-hmm. then we start seeing. So now having watched the show and thinking back on what I was watching, like, it's so wild. We moved downstairs. Don't worry, it's gonna come back to your, it's all gonna come back. (laughs) We go downstairs, I run into another whatever comedian friend, I'm like talking, blah, 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 blah. And I put my purse down on this table in front of, by the way, DJ Kittens, Lauren Abedini, who's so hot, is DJing, but like no one's on the dance floor until this lovely what I saw was like a middle-aged or like my age because I'm middle-aged Asian (laughs) woman dancing break dancing by herself or a person I shouldn't say woman person which is Aussie break dancing by themselves asking Sam to video it for them oh okay break dancing what the oh yeah full-on like oh god the robot in front of Lauren Abedini and then Chriselle walks in oh in a hot pink dress, fringe, and asks to put her purse next to my purse, which I'm like, yeah, sure. I look to my wife. I'm like, oh, my God, that's Chriselle. She's like, who the fuck is Chriselle? I'm like, dude, she just got engaged to G-Flip. She's like, who the fuck is named G-Flip? I'm like, oh, this oh. non-binary person from Australia who's kind of like emulates like a, f- like a, like a fuckboy version of Jojo Siwa. Like, <laughs> that's a great description. <laughs> Or like, do you know what I mean? Like, or like yes. a little like whatever, like that little skateboarder Ryan Sheckler or whatever he yes. was on MTV <laughs> like version. And I'm like, but she's so big. And Rachel's like, you need to go up to her and ask her to be on your podcast. I'm like, no, dude, I can't. That's like so cringe. I'm not going to do that. 
But then Aussie, so I want you to like really visualize. No one is on the dance floor except for Chrishell and Aussie. Sam taking video of Aussie, like <sighs> dancing so weird. I don't know who any of these people are. Chrishell just like dancing kind of with her friend, but like not really, but like really just wanting, knowing everybody's staring at her because she's just announced. Then I see this kind of like cheese lesbian walking around who ends up being Xander. Oh. Who's taking selfies the whole time with any famous person. Oh, shit. As far away as humanly possible from Vanessa, who now has a new nose. Okay. Yeah, clock that from the reunion. New nose. Quick. Very fast. Rachel, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what to tell You're you. My mind is now blown. That was, I had that experience. And now I've watched the show and I'm like, all of you guys are fucking monsters. I want you right now, one by one, to give me an analysis of all of the cast. Okay, great. Also, I feel like you were really in a queer tornado, like a Netflix tornado. Oh, and then a guy was a mermaid in the <laughs> sky with bubbles. And I'm literally <laughs> standing there trying to have a conversation with like my friend who works at Netflix, my wife, then this other podcaster named Mo Welch. Do you know Mo Welch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo Welch, her podcasting partner. And of course, I'm like, be on my podcast. And then there's like tan fucking France. I'm oh like, my and there's God. bubbles everywhere. And all the bubbles are getting on. Like, Soap bubbles, not like little children bubbles, but like, right. I feel like there's soap on my body with a mermaid in the sky. This is Let too me, much. It was too much. This is way too much. You have, yeah, you're like in Oh, and then Julia Fox land. walks in. What the fuck? It was that. It was, I can't explain to you. It was, it when it was like a weekday, it was like a Thursday. I this had was like a do. month ago before you even not got to know who these people were. I, so I have no fucking reference. All I have is the reference of this. Mal has 1,000 followers on the internet. So I right. was like, okay, I don't even know what's going on here. Now she has like 200 or something out of control. Yeah. Which I was like, welcome to being internet famous. I, I, had I known, it would have gone so much differently, Rachel. Like, let, <laughs> well, I don't want to bleed the witness here. I need to hear what you think about all of these people. Mal was like, let me get your number. And I was like, okay, whatever. Now I'm like, Liz, you were right in the middle of it all. Yeah. Well, I do feel like we have our shining star, our hero of the entire show, which is Mal, right? Hero. Mal is the, was the heartbeat, the dedicated, the completely loyal and committed, even though Mal's partner the whole time, not the whole time, but like when it mattered was very openly like, I'm in love with somebody else right now. And Mal just stood strong. And that was hard to see. That was tough. And then we have our villain, right? Vanessa. So wait, That's her name, right? No, no. I want you to go through everyone, though. So Mal is our hero. Who is yeah. Yoli? Yoli, uh, unfortunately, I am desperately sexually attracted to. I like I Yoli I can do I... no. <laughs> do you know so... what I said about Yoli in my what? one TikTok? I was like, Yoli is so hot. Yeah. Yoli is a love addict. Yes, 100%. And Mal was right the whole time. Mal was like, you could just fall in love with anyone. And then Yoli did. Yoli straight <laughs> up fell in love with the next person that showed up w willing. Like, that's a great read. I trust Mal with my life. I, I mean, would trust did you Mal. Did about the bank account comment, though? Oh, that was tough. That was tough. But I'm very, I'm blinded by like a, I feel like Yoli isn't just hot, like hot, hot. Like, Yoli is like super fit. Like, Yoli is like, strong yoli could put me in a headlock and like pin me down and make me beg for mercy and that is what i'm into <laughs> i mean yoli first of all the blue nails were just so bad i just oh. have to as a femme lesbian have to just make a comment the they nails were too were blue for so you blue i was like what is happening here <laughs> all right so yoli's so hot Yoli's so hot I that can't I cannot I think judge clearly that she was acting, I'm guessing, bad, right? She was demonic. She literally <laughs> told Mal. This is what killed me, though, in the reunion when Mal was like, yo, you had me looking like a fucking idiot on yeah. TV. And I just have to say, like, I loved Mal so much more in that moment. Like Rachel and I were, <laughs> my Rachel, your Rachel, yeah. everybody's fucking name is Rachel. Yeah. I was dying in that moment. She's like, yo, you had me looking so fucking stupid on TV. You literally told me, nah, let me just go like handle it with her. And you're like under the table holding hands. Oh. Like she's an asshole. I'm also like married. 
Yeah. So for if my wife proposed to me and then I went off and like dramatically ran after and like hugged and kissed and felt ter- like <laughs> it yeah. was so hard to watch. That I was, it was like, also the editors didn't take anything out of that last episode. I was like, can we cut away from like. These insane, like the Xander Vanessa breakup. I was like, I, it felt like an hour long. It was <laughs> unreal. Xander's like, like, I think you got what you need. And then it's yeah. like her walking through like a forest like oh, from underneath. Yeah. Okay. So then I guess we have to go to Xander. What are your thoughts on Xander? I'm like, wait, I was going to say something else crazy about these. Oh, wait. Well, before I move from our hero, Mal, mm. how does Mal have... Like when these people get onto the show, are they given a stylist? No, think? I think that's like Mal has style. How do I get style? You because have it. I want to. You got have, that Gucci belt. I seen that Gucci belt all over TikTok. I can't stop with that Gucci belt. I want to have the same aesthetic, uh, like Mal's aesthetic, but like way shinier. I have to just somehow figure out how to capture that. I think you're sti- Rachel. Not only have you become famous. You cut the hair. You got a very lesbian haircut. I had you've to. continued with the fitness like I wouldn't even believe. And your style has progressively gotten more and more like fashion gay. Thank God. You know what? I needed to hear it from you. That's what I need. I've got a uh, pinky ring now. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to really. Oh, boy. Yeah. OK. Like, w- don't okay. worry about it. You're okay. on your, you You're got right. it. Xander, so then we have and Xander. did you deep dive any of these people? Because I did, obviously. I, know I everything only about deep everyone. dived Lexi, which I should look within about why I did that. I mean, oh, I tried to we, find... I'm not there yet. Please <laughs> hold your comments. I am not there yet. I feel Lexi. like Xander, Xander needs... I feel like there are certain Xander, cast just so you know, is a PT trainer. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like her aesthetic on her Instagram, or their aesthetic, I think she uses her... I think she uses both. She does they and they her. and her. Okay, I yeah. just don't want to misgender people. Um, Xander, you has like pictures like on the beach in yoga poses with kettleballs. Oh, Not okay. Sure if that changes anything for you. I feel like Xander. There are there are two to three cast members on this show that I genuinely believe need to like figure out how to speak with their whole chest there's like a confidence thing, and maybe mm-hmm. it's like because these people are not like you know we're te- we're people that uh we host we are public you know we're talking we have podcasts sometimes when i'm listening to certain people on this show speak i'm like we gotta we gotta use the the whole diaphragm like with xander i was like and it might be from dating a narcissist for four years that Mm. took away some of xander's like power (laughs) possibly but like i'm hoping that xander can find but here's the thing about xander yeah lest we forget xander fucked the most bitches Oh, Xander fucks. Xander Do you remember when Vanessa was like, fucks. Xander's asexual? Xander is not asexual. Z- not asexual. At all. I was like, oh, she. Fucks. She's fucking. And she's yeah. fucking two of the more attractive cast members. Yeah. Xander was out there getting messy and. Mesopotamus. Yeah. All over the place. I mean, imagine having like good queer sex for three weeks and then trying to go back to like the uh, it's too. These people are like monogamous and then they're pausing and then they're fucking and then they're like going back. I mean, it so is so wild. A crazy, crazy show. <laughs> and I'm honestly like I'm worried about Xander. I look at Xander and I'm like, I want to protect you. There's too much like you're not ready for this. When I see Ray as well, Ray is somebody else that I was like. We got to protect Ray. We have to protect Ray at all costs. Ray. Okay. Ray is not ready for this world. (laughs) Ray. Here's let's break down what's so funny to me about Ray. One. How in the in the actual fucking universe is Ray with Lex? And we have to try to pause our comments on Lexi because Lexi could be an (laughs) entire episode unto itself because... (laughs) I have so many thoughts and feelings on that. I person. can't wait to get into to Lexi. But Ray, how the fuck? What is she doing with them titties? That's what I want. They're bigger than her. Two. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you mean? Oh. Yeah, I think about that. OK, so I have a thing where I don't want to. But no matter what, when I know that two people have fucked each other, if I see any groups of two, I'm picturing them fucking. Of course. 
I can't help it. It's going to happen. It's going to play in my mind. I'm going to crunch the numbers. I'm going to see who's doing what. And when I think about Ray and Lexi, I'm like, it It doesn't. Comp- you know what's so funny? This is why I love you. I literally sat there at the with, when we watched the reunion. I was like, I keep trying to imagine them fucking. And I literally can't do it. My wife's yeah. like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I just when they got engaged. Yeah. Like, first of all, I mean, again, I have so much to break down on Lexi. Like, <laughs> I have so much. But. Ray is a sweetie little baby angel. I yeah. mean, I kind of hated the fact that she and Vanessa, when they had sex, she like shame spiraled so tough on it. I know. I'm like, well, then why'd you fucking do it? Like, that was heartbreaking. Honestly, it was heartbreaking as like, I-, I feel like as queer people too, like Vanessa just reminded me of so many straight girls that I have like fucked. And I realized that Vanessa is not straight, but, and I'm projecting a lot onto her, mm. but that whole morning conversation and like, Ray was devastating. And then the, to hear Vanessa be like, well, I wasn't even attracted to her. That was nothing. I was like, can we help Ray? Like Ray's spiraling right now. I mean, Ray was spiraling. Ray she still is basketball. spiraling. Even at the reunion, Ray's just spiraling. crying. I'm like, and now, because you know that they're not together anymore. Ray and Lexi aren't. Yeah. No, I know. I, I told you I deep dove See? on the internet. <laughs> Thank God she fucking break the shackles off my feet so I can dance, girl. Damn, break them dang. shackles. Like, get out of there. Lexi is literally. Wait, psycho. do you hate Lexi? I li- wrote <laughs> Mal a message last week and I was like, how did you pick her? Here's the thing about Lexi. One, when she sits down, I don't know if you watched anything, when she would sit down at a table, her legs would be this far apart. Like, she is so scary to me. <laughs> She's like, hi, I'm Lexi. Like, <laughs> she also is an OnlyFans model. Yes. I found that out last night. Nazara just sent me some info. Nazara finished it. I was in the South yes, today, this morning. I was in Georgia this morning. And we had to watch it at separate times. And Nazara was sending me information. So it's we basically have a team of lesbians at this point, all researching all of these individuals. But I love Lexi. And no, no, her. there's no way. She you look at us. Look at the content. Thank God. I'm team Lexi in a huge how, way. How? From like a TV perspective or from like an actual human perspective? From a TV perspective. Okay, fine. On the fair. show. And because Mal and Lexi's friendship, I loved. Okay. And that, right? They were like so good to each other. Okay. But like, you know what? It's so funny. It's just like the body and the ev- nothing. Ma- nothing makes sense. For you don't me like for huge titties. I huge. love huge titties. Trust me. But also, like <laughs> when I make you steaks, like <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when you make me steaks. steaks. And like she <sighs> just flexing on the like different Rolexes were so insane. The like YSL shoes. Then she has the her Vera Leger bandage dresses. Her titties everywhere. Like. She is so funny to me because she's the butchest OnlyFans Fam. model yeah. I've ever seen. Like, that bitch goes on Barstool Sports and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, no, she does. I looked it up. Like, she also has, every time she speaks, it seems so rehearsed and so, like, earnest and tropey and mm. ridiculous. Um, And she is scary. And she... <laughs> Wait, you know what I did find a little strange? Her relationship to her family felt like toxic. Or I, if I was dating somebody like that, I would be uncomfortable with the level of comfort. When, they, when, she, when she kept being like, "Well, my mom's gonna do the whole wedding," I was like, "Do gay?" I'm like, "Queer people don't act like that." Queer people no, are not. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, also people- when she was like, "Well, you know when she." let her inside of her. I was like, babe, shut up. Like, you need to shut the fuck. Like, and her dad, like the jeweler, uh, it's just <laughs> all too much. It's too much. It's too I do feel like much. Ray emotionally was being swallowed up. And that is stressful to see. Because like we want to, s- when I'm watching queer TV, it's very we, you know, it's hard because we actually live the community. We see people. We know our femmes. We know our butches. We know how all this shit works. And we very rarely get queer reality TV. And then when we got this one, I was like, 
huh? <laughs> I was like, this well, is- let's let's just. I mean, I'm saving the best for the last, so we'll get through Vanessa. I mean, Aussie and Sam. Sam had the best glow up. Aussie has like an actual rage problem, so I don't know. How Aussie much- had a, t- a tantrum on the show <laughs> in a way that I was like, this is a toxic tantrum. What are we doing? You're in your forties. It was. And obviously the childhood was bad, but like Sam. We all have childhood trauma. We have to figure out a way to be grown ups. I'm I feel like Sam, Sam was everyone's therapist on that show. <laughs> Sam. Well, and I called her Sarah in my famous TikTok video, which let me tell you, the lesbian <laughs> TikToks came for me hard. There, and because- now they found you. <laughs> And now they found me. Um, but those two were very much together, at least at the Netflix party. I can tell you what wow. I saw. Well, because she was videotaping Aussie <laughs> dancing next to Chriselle, not even realizing who Chriselle was. Which oh, my was God. Incredible. Here are I my don't thoughts. like Aussie. I only like Sam and Mal and Lexi. Fair enough. So wait, Vanessa, and Mildred, because I'm an no, issue. No. Once again, no, just hey, wait. I don't know if you knew that you were having on the most problematic person. <laughs> no, <on>. just, <laughs> well, you can't bring up Mildred. I'm not ready yet. We have to just complete Vanessa and then we have to get to so many things. Yeah. Here's the thing about Vanessa. Had Vanessa stayed in her convictions of wanting to be Polly, that was the most interesting thing on the show. And it yeah. really was great. Her father, who's the unsung hero, and Natasha, who yeah. is... Yes, we're going to get to in a minute. But really her father being like, yeah, so I've been in your position, but I really just wanted to be chosen. I wanted to be like a pick me girl. And I yeah. it was my ego taking over. And Vanessa's like, I disagree. I'm going to oh. write a letter. I'm going to write a poem about it and address you all. It's like, bitch, you didn't you came in there thinking everyone wanted to fuck you. Yeah. Nobody wanted literally <laughs> nobody wanted to fuck you. Not even your girl. And. Now you're pissed. Right. But she the got dad, knows. She the knows. dad read it in a, such a concise, perfect way to be like, this happened to me and I wanted to win. And when I heard him be like, oh, yeah, this is about you winning. That was like the most true sentence of the entire series. Literally. Literally. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we conclude our, our uh, conclusions. Tiff.dur, because that's her Instagram, or their, yeah. excuse me, their Instagram handle is Tiff.dur, which, <laughs> and Mildred. I said before I watched the reunion in my infamous TikTok video that 400 people have watched, I said <laughs> very specifically, those two people should never, never, ever date each other. No. I, Mildred is so buck wild crazy off the charts 100 percent. like when she came for ozzy i was like well and ozzy wasn't necessarily right but like mildred is not she's one of those people that will just keep yelling over you until you can't speak anymore but when tiffany (laughs) lost (laughs) her mind which by the way the fact that like there is basically an episode of wife swap oh yeah between those two couples (laughs) insane it's so fucking funny like the producers literally went up to those two couples and were like listen nobody wanted to fuck you guys right. so you're gonna have to swap this is what it's gonna have to be now. this is Sorry. what it's gonna be kickball tiff, style you guys are the last ones here tiff losing her fucking mind about the husky sleeping in the bed oh my god <laughs> i mean what the <laughs> fuck also tiff in general, like when Tiff started, I was like, I hate this person because they're toxic and they are like this type of like toxic masculinity that we sometimes see in our gorgeous butch community that we're like, we need to work on that. And oh. then with the dog stuff, I was like, Sam isn't even saying that the dog can't <laughs> sleep in the bed. You're being what? Why are we like this with our dogs? Chill out about Shiloh. But then there was like a little bit of growth. Tiff like started to learn a little bit of community, like episodes. Like the middle two, I saw Tiff genuinely be like affected in a positive way by knowing Sam. And then at the end, doubled down on the chaos. Tripled down on the chaos. I was like, oh no, we've lost it. And if you want more chaos, look at their Instagram. Which by the way, I think we should caveat. We we forgot to caveat the whole thing, which that these were San Diego gays. Oh, right. And San Diego is a special, <laughs> special kind of gay. 
Yeah. It really, really is. It's a very, very specific, ear gauged, bad tattoos, yeah. flip flop in the winter yes. kind of gay. Well, and it's like a military base. Like you get some like very interesting, like I've done shows in San Diego where I'm like, you guys are right wing conservatives. <laughs> 100%. How the fuck is this possible? Yeah, no, it's Camp Pendleton's like right there. Yeah, like truly, truly. And, you know, Tiff and Mildred, first of all, Mildred having like a 16 year old is, I, I can't even dress. It's crazy. Oh, um, Good Mildred for her. Is like actually too, you know, like you have those friends that are just like always like getting the cops called on them or are always like in a legal battle or just like weirdly always suing people, like these toxic, crazy, like, craziness just follows them it's like oh you know me like uh my car got impounded again and you're like it's wednesday what do we you know what i mean <laughs> mildred is one of those individuals one. and the eyelashes alone listen when i put on fake eyelashes which is more than you'd think <laughs> they make me so sleepy like i oh, almost right. feel like i can't drive a car with them <laughs> like it's we're almost being like under the influence you know sure the weight of those eyelashes, I was like, are you okay? You must be so tired. And then we have Tifter. Yeah. Who I knew Tifter. was never going <laughs> to come back to reality when I saw the baby blue Dumb and Dumber-esque like vest yeah, bow tie. Really, any lesbian that wears a bow tie is so scary to me. It is a red flag in our community. The <laughs> bow tie in the year of our gay god of two, 2023 is like letting people know I am a huge troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're... and then what's worse is fucking Aussies was made out of bird feathers. <gasps> I know. <laughs> I saw Aussies and I was like, we're just you're just letting everyone know that like I have not worked on my trauma. If you see a bow tie on a lesbian, you can you can guarantee that they are emotionally stunted. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. It's not it's good. It's not good. So And Tiff, like, also, I don't know. I was like, I have so many of Tiff's, like, I have that, what, that, I wore that essentially last night. And I was like, do I look too much like Tiff now? We got to figure you wear? ourselves out. The blue. It was, wasn't it, was it baby blue? Oh, you mean for the reunion? It was yes, white. The reunion. The reunion was white. I have that outfit. And I was like, it looked like somebody was going to get married again. So at the beginning, when they weren't addressing whether or not Tiff and Mildred were together, I was like, oh, it'd be fun if they did something. And then when I realized that not only were they, of course not, of course they're not together anymore. <laughs> but but motherfucking like, the cops have been called. Not yeah. They that's where I was like, the reunion began now. Like, <laughs> this is where we were getting into some queer chaos. Because like, but I'm like, but oh, by the way, talk about the cops. Mildred just called the cops on herself the whole time. Like, if you really <laughs> watched it, Tifter didn't say anything. She's like, what are you talking about, Mildred? And Mildred's like, OK, so you want to talk about domestic violence? <laughs> and everyone's oh, like, no, that took such a harsh turn. Also, <laughs> tonally, everyone else was like, oh, we're like drama, drama. And then Mildred pops off and everyone was like, oh, we we're not. That. And you know who the only person who defended her was? Fucking Yoli. Yeah. Because you're nothing but cha chaos over here. I feel like I'm is such an issue because I'm like really deeply attracted to Mildred and Yoli. And I'm like, I have to work through that. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't make sense because you have the most sweet little baby angel girlfriend yes, that ever was who also is not fucking around. Yeah. So I don't know. Honestly, I the only person on that show I would have sex with is Mal. Mm -hmm. Period. Point blank. Yeah, Everybody Mal. else was a no go zone. Also, I would just like you to take a moment and think about, like, you or me or your girlfriend or my wife being plopped into that show. <laughs> Honestly, oh. I, it my literally is my worst would nightmare. Not survive. Like, there's just no way. <laughs> I would it's find somebody cool like Mal and be like, yo, we got to get through this together somehow, yep. somewhere. Like, also, they were sleeping in full-sized beds. Oh. <laughs> it was I rough. can't even go, I can't sleep with anyone that's not my wife in a bed, ever. No. Like, never, not once anymore. I it's didn't like sleepover parties as a kid. I was too anxious. 
Mm-hmm. Could you imagine sleeping for three weeks? What if no. you have to go to the bathroom? No, I don't even like like other the way that other like it's such a weird. I used to be such a slut, and then I have now been like in a relationship now for like almost five years, which for me is a very long time. And I like now I'm like I don't even like the way that other people smell. I don't like the way they talk. I don't like how like other people <laughs> like look at me. I'm like I don't want to be looked at by anyone other than my super hot girlfriend. <laughs> You need to wife her, by the way. I know. Stop I'm, like, there, n- no time like the present. I know I should. You're Bam. famous now. <laughs> Get her over here. You're famous now. Yeah. You're on the road. You have sold out shows. You have a sh- sold out show at the Largo on my birthday. I can't even go to it because you have oh, all these we'll do, famous we'll people. Again. Yeah. It's time. Wait, I mean, how ever, many? Well, yeah, go ahead. Did, did you I ever watch... Um, because we're we're talking about queer reality TV, which is like not a big enough market. Like they need to do so much more. The only one other one. Did you ever watch? Are you the one? Come one, come all. I didn't. Okay, that was a very well done queer reality what? show. I mean, it's chaotic. It's chaotic, but it made a few more like well, lesbians like- in the digital space. Here's what I'll tell you. My favorite reality show, and the listeners know, is Love After Lockup. That? Oh, you're a Matt Sharp head. Who's Love that? After, the producer? So Matt Sharp is like the creator of um, like Love After Lockup. He does 90 like, Day Fiance. Yes, he does mm-hmm. that whole thing, and he's like my personal icon. That cool. is some of Same the best. Z's? Yes, that's the I, best reality TV. I've watched all 19 seasons. There's nothing else for me to watch. I'm... I, so now I have now just started. Basically, it's 90 Day Fiance, but we met on vacation and now we're trying to make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's called You're like Caribbean we're trying to, Love. Yes, Caribbean Love. Yeah, no, I know. I know. I'm in <laughs> it. And these to me, and the only other show that doesn't exist is Temptation Island, which uh, did you ever watch that? No. 10 out of 10 recommend. Essentially, it's very similar to what we just watched. The It's almost like a ripoff of the ultimatum, but couples are basically given like are we going to make this work or are we not like are we going to get married or are we not and they go to an island and it's all heterosexual and they split up but they have two houses and in the houses there are 20 extremely (laughs) hot straight like single people that want to fuck and ev but the better part everybody fucks all the time it's like the best oh i really like that each week this is where it gets even crazier each week like each person each part of the couple gets shown in a completely out of context 30 second clip no. why would they it's do that? evil it's like because you could say something like yeah i mean like she fucks so good and i love it when she fucks me and i could be talking about my wife but like completely out of context oh and then they'll God. and then they'll stitch it together with like me giving a hug to you or something oh that's diabolical Bolical. It's diabolical and it's amazing because then it just ups the ante and everybody gets pissed. So oh then they start God. fucking around. It's yeah, it's pure That's chaos. Genius. Which I love. But I love after lockup is so great. I do think there needs to be more queer television. It's so funny. I have a friend who's a producer and he and I had this whole meeting during the pandemic about like queer dating shows and why they haven't been and what works and what doesn't work. And I think like I do to put a pin in it, I do think ultimatum showed that like they all just fucking say yes and get married in the end and then yeah. they like don't you know what i mean like yeah. i wanted more breakups i really needed 100%. ray to look at lexi and be like nah fuck you yeah you know what i mean yeah there was not enough i think of the like shock values of backstabbing deceiving you know what i mean kind of like it was deeply communicative and loyal and which is I mean, lesbianism. That's us. You know what I mean? But I think, yeah, there wasn't, it wasn't like drunk enough. We didn't see enough. It was pretty like clean cut with like a terrible straight host, which made zero sense. Yeah, Joanna Schwisher Fisher Escobazier Santago, whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, she's why? like five names. Who is she? Why is she? It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you're going on tour. You have all these sold out dates. Yes. You're so famous. You're going yep. to San Francisco, the punchline where oh, yeah. I threw up in the bathroom many years ago. I think I also did like drugs in that bathroom at one point. <laughs> um, I also yeah. interviewed to be a cocktail waitress there. Didn't get it. Okay. Um, fucked up. How 
is the tour going? Because it is two dykes and a mic. Do you guys yeah. almost kind of do like a live show? I, like I'm so curious because um, you sold out so quickly. I can't go to my birthday show. That's actually messed up that you can't go. We'll do it again. We have mm-hmm. another date on the books in August. So that'll mm-hmm. be a good one. Great. Mm-hmm. We're both, it's going to be very, very fun. Right. Um, but the shows have been unreal. I feel like uh, we the the way that we do the shows on the road is that I do stand up and Mackenzie does stand up and then we do a live version of the podcast. So you get to see us as it. individuals as because we both do stand up on our own. So you're able to see like a little taste of who we actually are as individuals. And then we sit down, we record and sometimes we will, depending on the equipment of the comedy club, put the episodes out as like live versions as well. And it's been crazy. I've been going to places I've never been and also living my actual dreams that I've had since I was a young boy. So I'm having like the best time. We we go to places that are, you know, we've been to like Texas and Florida and Tennessee and Georgia. Like I'm going to places where they're actively under attack legislatively. And mm-hmm. I think that it's already a... I mean, you know how it is to make queer content for queer people. It's like very, it's powerful and incredible to do. And I think we're lucky. Like, you know, when I started stand up, you couldn't, you were like doing gay comedy for straight people when I started. Yeah. And now you can actually sell out tickets for queer people, which it just wasn't like that necessarily before, and especially not at like my level. So I think going to these places where, Like the community is like, it's crazy. It's, I don't know. I've never seen so many queer people in so many places. I feel really lucky. And it is like, it's unreal. It's like, it's madness. I was literally this morning in Georgia and like doing shows for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of queer people. It's like the, and then we stay after we get to meet them all. It's like, I love it. And they know everything that you're talking about. Like when you do jokes, if I mentioned Shane, they know exactly who the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to make, you know, I feel like I'm not having to like make myself a gay clown in order to like level up to have straight people understand what I'm talking about. There is like this beautiful understanding and it is like the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> I, I, love I love it. This yeah. makes me so happy. Yeah, we're going to Canada. I'm like, what? I had to get a pa- my passport renewed. I look hot as fuck in it. Thank God. Oh, I yeah, did. it's fun. Did it's you wear really, stripes? Really good. What did I wear? No, I went completely topless. They loved it. Sick. I'm so <laughs> into it. I have to get my passport renewed. Thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. Um, are people like throwing panties on stage vibes? Some people. I mean, it's like, what? Some if I come to say, one of your shows, I'm throwing my bra on the stage. Please do. Honestly, please. Like, I think it's, it's this also, big. Like, so doing- you might miss it. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> We've been doing two deck shows for so long that like we started before the pandemic and we used to have to like. We, our audience used to be older lesbians that I think just saw the word dyke and were like, I want to go there. And now because of TikTok and stuff, our fan base is much younger. So I feel like I'm like talking to people that are like, I feel like a dad a little bit. Like 12 year olds. Yeah. Or because like even some comedy clubs are lowering their age limit to have oh tickets God. be younger. Oh so I'm like, they're teaching me how to like take a picture on 0.5 because they're all Gen Z and I'm a millennial. And Point all, five. what the fuck are you talking about? You got it. Okay. I'm so glad you got to know. So you, when you open your phone, okay, open. this is what they're all doing, by the way, oh. you go to your, you go to your, Oh, I see. Camera, you go to 0.5. Then you turn it around, Liz. You got to turn it around this way and then take it this way. That's the way. That's what they're doing. And then I go like this. Yes. Yep. And you go up high. And but how you do you take it. the picture with your fingers? The sound button. <sighs> yes. There. Yes. That's Did it. Did it work? It didn't even take the picture. Try again. You'll take, you got to push the button. I push the button. Push, push the button. Sound? What? Yeah. Is it up? Or down. Oh, it did it. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's the one. <sighs> God, I hate myself. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. See, the I just do it the old-fashioned way. I just put a lot of Botox and filler in my face, and I don't <laughs> eat food. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm oh, like, yeah, the classic. 
the classic 90s useful cocktail. Don't <laughs> eat, inject, and drink booze. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's not working for me. So <laughs> you look like um, you're 19. Way to go. Congrats. Not a stitch of makeup on. Oh my go God. Crazy. Thanks. I did a TikTok today where I did a filter and it tells you how old you look and it's a teenager. Yeah. You have, I feel like lesbians don't age. And I've been seeing lesbians all over and like all of us look young as fuck. Mm, t- lesbians don't age, babe. Am I not seeing the right ones? I've seen lesbians in their like 40s and 50s that look 19. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. It's revolting against the patriarchy. Um, Rachel, I love you. I love I'm you. So, so I miss you. What the I fuck? Know. I can't believe it's been a year, but it's insane. Well, that's what happens when you're on the road and fucking yeah. titty twisting Kehlani on the internet. That's me. Well, there you have it. One of my most favorite people on the planet. How do you not love Rachel? I mean, I, I just adore her. I also just love the glow up. She and Mackenzie have done such an incredible job with their podcast. It gives me hope. It gives me hope that this podcast will get even bigger and I get to talk to more people and more people listen to it. Um, I'm so happy for her. I'm so happy for Mackenzie. Like I said, if they are coming to a city near you, I cannot recommend you go and see their show enough. If you don't, it's homophobic because it's pride, right? Um, I'm just kidding. But you really should (laughs) go and see them on tour if they are in a city near you. And if they're not in a city near you, listen to their podcast. Um, Happy Pride. 